Hey everyone, this is Jack Wallen again. It's been a long time since I've actually talked about audiobooks and audiobook narration, but and that's because I, I took a break. I had to take a break from narrating audio narrating audiobooks for various and sundry reasons, but I'm back. And I thought that I would take a moment to uh, start a little series on how to best narrate an audiobook. And I'm actually recording an audiobook right now, uh, um, in the middle of recording a chapter. And I thought that I would address something that I think is really important for narrators. Not just narrators, but also those who are looking for a narrator for their book. Now, I'm also a writer. I've written over 40 books. I've narrated, I think, over 30 books, and I've written over 40 books. I think 44 or something like that. So, I think, at this point, I know what I'm doing. I think. Maybe not. Who knows? I might be kidding myself. Um, I'm also a trained actor. I have a Master of Fine Arts in Acting from Purdue University. Uh, I've been on Broadway. I've done an performed in shows across the country. Um, and so, like I said, I think, I think, I think I know what I'm doing. Um, what I want to address today has to do with me mentioning me being a writer. One of the things that I have spent a good amount of time as a writer doing is developing my writer voice. Because the writer voice is the thing that delineates me from other writers. A lot of people read, say, for example, they read Stephen King because of Stephen King's voice and his ability to tell a story. So every writer should spend a vast amount of time in their early years developing their writer voice, which I have done. The same thing holds true, I believe, with narrators. I think that narrators should practice and develop their own narrating voice. Let me tell you why I think that. There are thousands, probably hundreds of thousands, maybe tens of thousands, I don't know the actual number, of narrators out there. And the more you listen to audiobooks, the more you realize a lot of these narrators, although they might have a different timbre to their voice, a different tone, they tend to sound the same. I don't like that. I don't like to sound the same. I like to differentiate myself from other people. So I have, over the years, developed a certain style of narrating books. It's a certain pace, certain inflections. Uh, it's kind of like my narrating style is not like this, but it's it's kind of like Christopher Walken's style of speaking. When you hear Christopher Walken, you know you're hearing Christopher Walken, not just because of the tone of his voice, but the way in which he speaks. So I know that there are writers out there that reach out to me to narrate their books because of the voice that I have developed. Now, the voice that I have developed does tend to lend itself more to horror and thrillers and things like that. It certainly doesn't lend itself to romance, although I would probably try it and see if I could succeed, and I could probably bend and twist my voice into using, into working with with uh, romance. But um, I don't even remember where I was in this in this book. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to record a, a brief snippet of this book and let you see if you can discern, figure out my tone, my, my voice. See if I can remember where I was. There I am. Okay. Now, you're going to hear the, one of the, the voice in this particular chapter. I was going to do a different chapter, but it just struck me now. The voice that I'm using is a young kid's voice that is... Um, has a a stunted mental capacity. So take that into consideration when you hear this particular voice. This is, I think, the fourth book in this series. And one of the things that the author 
liked very much about my approach to this book is the way I handled this young boy. So, and I, I have done other, I, I did, um, I, I did, a, I recorded a series that included a young man with Down syndrome and uh, the author really appreciated how I approached that because the author actually has a child with Down syndrome. So um, I try to handle these sorts of things, issues with a great amount of respect and care. So understand that. So you'll be hearing this a little bit about out of context. So with that said, let's see what happens here. Um, okay, here we go. I'll be right back. Carson spoke aloud as if Sarah could hear him from the distance. He returned his attention to the ground. Carson hurried along a fading trail of prints, dusting off toward a big pile of boulders. The adventure of tracking the scraper disappeared. Carson wanted to climb the rocks instead. He missed climbing. Where they lived in Texas, there weren't many trees for Carson to climb. He loved climbing up trees or mounds of dirt. Carson had plenty of things to climb back in Iowa and Kansas. But this place was flat. As he reached the top of the largest rock, Carson raised his hands to the sky like he had conquered the enemy. He could hardly see the farm from where he was. It looked like a small toy. He shouted as loud as he could, feeling free and happy for the first time since they had moved to the new homestead. There you go. There's a little sample. I use... I use pacing a lot. I use tempo a lot. Um, sometimes I'll throw in a pause where there is not a pause indicated in the text because especially in, in horror and thrillers, I like to build suspense. And it, I think it's an important aspect of being a book narrator that you are able to create an ambience with from within the text and kind of not lead the, the listener on but indicate or at least remind them that they are listening to something that's a bit darker and something bad is going to happen uh, and and so it's, it's just really important for book narrators to take the time to develop their particular voice. It doesn't have to be drastic. It doesn't have to be Christopher Walken-esque. But it should be you. Don't try to emulate someone else. I mean, if I could, I would emulate Neil Gaiman's voice because he has a great speaking voice and it's perfect for narrating. But... I am not him. I am me. So I use the things, the sensibilities that I have that are unique to me and put them into my narration so that the author of the book is getting something unique. They're not getting a cookie cutter narrator. See what I mean? Anyway, that's it for now. These I'm going to I'm going to create more of these and uh, they'll be shorter than my other book video series. But anyway, that's a little bit of a look into the recording of audiobooks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for paying attention, and I hope that you've learned something. Rock on, everybody.